right, good morning everyone, or good afternoon. Uh, we're going to start in just a minute. So welcome to the fifth annual Mahado Memorial. We're very glad that um, you could join us today to commemorate the life of Abhijit Mahado. So Abhijit was one of us. He was a second year PhD student at Duke working on computational mechanics. And in January 2008, at 29 years old, he was murdered very near to campus, victim of a, of a violent and senseless crime. This year is especially difficult for the friends and family of Abhijit because the suspected killer was recently acquitted of all charges and no one has yet been held accountable for the murder of Abhijit. The tragedy that happened to Abhijit could happen to any one of us anywhere in the nation. The reason this memorial exists is to bring together the graduate and professional community at Duke to remember a budget and celebrate his passions. I did not get the chance to know a budget personally, but from what I learned of him, he was intellectually curious with a kind and outgoing personality. And I think he would be very happy to see the display of talent to bring together art and science that occur every year at this memorial. In memory of Abhijit, the Pratt School of Engineering created the Mahado Fellowship, a merit-based scholarship for international PhD students. And I would like to invite Professor Aaron Franklin to present the award to this year's nominee. Thank you, and I feel honored to be here and present this award. Um, I'm able to present it uh, on behalf of uh, my first graduate student that I recruited. I'm new to the faculty here at Duke, and I like telling the story of Zhu Hui Cheng by saying that I had to go all the way to China to recruit him. And uh, it was new, as a new faculty member, I, I had not anticipated how many emails would come per week from international students interested in coming to do their studies in the United States. And while I was still at IBM uh, in the research staff there, I was on a trip to Beijing and there was a, a large conference that I was presenting at with a professor from Oxford. And there was one student in that conference that kept asking questions throughout our presentations, which was intended, but his questions were really pointed and he seemed really knowledgeable in the field. And so this professor and I said, who, who, we went up to our host and said, who is this guy? You know, is he one of your students from Peking University? And he says, that guy? Oh, he's an undergrad. You know, he's from some small college. Who, who knows where he's from? And, uh, and I got to know the, this young man and realized I was very impressed by both his passion for the things that he was striving to learn and his desire to study in the United States. And uh, knowing how the system works, coming from a college with less reputation in a country like China, made it difficult to consider getting the right opportunity to come to the U.S. So when, I, uh, when he contacted me and looked for uh, a post in the U.S. as a grad student, I helped the uh, best I could from IBM to get him into a program, which he did get accepted to a couple of other programs. But I'll tell you what, the day after I signed my offer letter from Duke, one of the first emails I sent was to Zhe Wei and said, forget the other program, you need to come to Duke and join my, my, my group. And uh, I'm grateful that he did. And uh, his first trip to the U.S. was coming here to North Carolina. And I think uh, already in the short time I've been here and that he's been here, he's represented what it seems that this fellowship is meant to embody, which is kind of the international fulfillment of an American dream, if you will, which is coming and achieving goals via the U.S. educational system that uh, are had even in the far reaches of China in this case. And so for that reason, uh, I'm grateful to present uh, the Mahato Fellowship to Zhu Wei Cheng. Wow, this is definitely a shot in the arm for me to pursue my passion. I always felt passionate about research and innovation. 
on nanoelectronics. It's the technology that would, in the future, provide a platform for billions of people to research, innovate, create, imagine, and connect with each other. And uh, of course, I believe there will be more dancing of science and art. And I'm really happy and looking forward to be part of it. And thank you. Thank you, Professor Franklin. Thank you. Congratulations, Hue. <coughs> so every year, the keynote speaker is chosen because he or she exemplifies how to bridge the gap between art and science. This year, we're very excited to have Professor Albert Falk with us. Dr. Falk received his PhD in surface science and nanotechnology from the University of Barcelona in Spain. During his PhD, he was a visiting scientist at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab working on atomic force microscopy. He was then a postdoc at MIT developing microelectromechanical systems before joining the Harvard Center for Engineering in Medicine to apply soft lithographic methods to tissue engineering. He has been at the University of Washington Bioengineering Department since June 2000, where his lab works at the interface between microfluidics, neurobiology, and cancer. He's going to tell us about BAIT, an outreach initiative of scientific art developed by his lab and himself since March 2007. Please join me in welcoming Professor Albert Falk. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? All right. Let me figure this out for a second. Okay. So this is the laser. Right. So uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I I think um, I want to first uh, uh, state that I consider this the probably the greatest honor of my career. Um, I, I want to say because. Uh, you know, being invited to talk about the, the art is, uh, you know, I, I have to say that uh, I, in, in my career I've, I've tried to raise money for art and I, I've noticed that uh, it's, it's about, it takes about as much effort to raise, to raise the, um, about thousand dollars for art as it is, uh, as it takes uh, effort to, to raise about a million dollars for science. It's about that, that much effort. So, so for me to be here at Duke University is, is really a great honor to be speaking about art. And um, so I'll tell you uh, what uh, BAIT is about. And I, I first want to um, see if this advances. I don't know if it advances. Uh, I would like to advance without having to walk all the way here. No, but first of all, I would like to talk about the, uh, this uh, scientific art or sci art, as it's, it's known in the in the uh, in the uh, social uh, in, the, uh, in Twitter. Uh, the, that's the Twitter tag. Uh, the pioneer this is not always recognized. Uh, in 1968, uh, uh, Frank Molina uh, is a, a Caltech rocket pioneer founded uh, a sci-art magazine called Leonardo in, in Paris. And then his son in, in Berkeley founded uh, the Leonardo Society that is still uh, very active in San Francisco. And so I wanted to uh, recognize their, their, their work. And they have a very large staff and they do very uh, active uh, programs. They have fellowships uh, and um, uh, magazines, books, and so on. So they are really the, the pioneers of the, of the sci art field uh, in, this, in this thing. Does this one work? Okay. Yes. So first of all, I want to thank you very much. 
uh, I want to, I, sometimes I'm asked to say, well, why do you do this? You know, why do you do this art in science? I just want to answer that question first because I think it's a, it's a legitimate question and uh, why we have a lot of fun doing it. First of all, I want to say that art is very enjoyable. For, I, I hope uh, I, probably everyone here uh, has, uh, shares that. But uh, also, I, I want to say that art is uh, a, a way I found over the years that is a, is a very efficient vehicle to communicate science to the public. And and I'm not the first one to find that. I, I, I found that uh, probably the, 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 the group of people that uh, awoke me to this concept uh, were uh, Felice Frankel and George Whitesides at, at Harvard, um, who uh, I believe Felice Frankel was a speaker here also. But uh, George Whitesides, uh, who works in my field, uh, and is the, the, one of the pioneers of, of uh, microfluidics as well. Uh, he puts together beautiful uh, uh, renditions of his of his work as well in, in in the form of books. He's a beautiful writer, so he's very uh, he's, he's also been a, a great communicator of science. And and so um, I think that in general, uh, you, you know, you have to recognize that, that art is, is is very is a it's a great form of of, of uh, communicating uh, the science in general uh, for for. Uh, for people who are not as uh, versed in, in science as us, you know, so uh, um, that's that's a, an important reason why we do this. Um, art is also a great form of advertisement. Um, I will talk more about this, but we do. Uh, we've done uh, art exhibits, which are a lot of fun to organize. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. Uh, it, my artist is, is our artist is hanging in the uh, in the in the in the. Uh, offices of my uh, my department, and uh, the, the people in the administration love it, so I just uh, give it to them, and it's hanging around. So I'm a, I'm a popular guy in the department, <laughs> and uh, and I like that. I don't know. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, it's also very um, uh, uh, it, because I have I will talk about it as well. I have a website where I hang uh, I, I post my my uh, my art. This, these uh, the people uh, are, are used now to going to that website and, and using it, and uh, uh, it's been used for several uh, uh, brochure conferences, you know, and so I've, I've, uh, it's uh, you know several a couple of times uh, they've been they've used this for 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 making the the, the brochure, the, the advertisements for for conferences. Can you imagine the the the, adverti the free advertisement that this is for my work. Uh, you know, I go to a conference and, and there it is. It's all the work is all my work is all my name is all plastered around. Uh, it's uh, without without me having even uh, uh, you know publishing a paper. That's, that's just the art. It's just my name is, is there. So that's a that's an important thing. Another important thing is um, that I want to emphasize is the. Is the uh, a, a lot of um, uh, the, the importance of uh, uh, social media in this in this role, and that. so a lot of uh, scientists, I think, uh, we do not pay enough attention to this. Uh, we we do not uh, play with social media enough, and I think it's uh, there. Uh, it, it, it doesn't take much to open a, a Twitter account, and, and it, it actually, and when you go give a talk, say, you know, I'm giving a talk at such and such place, advertise your work. So the <coughs> same, same goes here. Actually, uh, mm, you know, artists are very active in, 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 the, in Twitter. A lot of other uh, groups are very active in, 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 in other social media. So I just want to say this because, um, uh, you know, we, we use uh, this, this interface uh, as, as a way to advertise our work, but it, it's also used for, um, for interfacing, uh, ad advertising your, your, it can be used to advertise your work to uh, my, my Twitter, my, now my Twitter account. Uh, is being followed by uh, people that are uh, by uh, by people in, in industry, by journalists, editors, and, and so on. So it's, it it has, uh, although I did it originally for for artists, uh, it turns out that it's benefited my my uh, my my science program as well. Well, another reason that you might want to consider. Uh, about this, that you know, scientific knowledge gets assimilated uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the stuff that these geniuses 
uh, did the, you know the disco discoveries that are so important and uh, this this stuff now is taught in in high school uh, you know is uh, and uh, but but uh, we have learned to store knowledge but we cannot store creativity so this is some thought that you know when how, how do you uh, the, the, put some thought into this, and, and you re, you'll realize that, that art has that that uh, creativity point that we we do not know how to store creativity yet. So I think that uh, you know I think that that's one uh, that's one thing that is so appealing about art uh, that that, uh, that we cannot seem to uh, uh, condense into a, a storable form. So I, I like that part about art. And the other thing is kind of related to this, that technology quickly becomes obsolete. So uh, uh, I don't know if you came to my talk yesterday, but this is uh, related to my particular field of microfluidics. It started about uh, 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, these are the first, one of the first PDMS devices. Now a lot of people are switching to paper. Uh, others are switching to 3D printing already. You've probably heard about 3D printing, right? But uh, this, this is uh, very quickly evolving, and and so, but you know, art stays forever. So these are thoughts that you might consider when you know, giving value, more value to art instead of uh, you know, uh, that when uh, that, that I I consider this when I think about why I do why I do this, I think you know probably hundred years from now nobody will be reading my papers and maybe my art will still be around okay so that's that's one thought that sometimes i think about it okay so i'll, I'll now I'll go through some of the, quickly through some of the um, more popular um, uh, pieces that we've generated uh, one thing that i'll i'll point to is that i always sign um, my uh, our work with as if it were a paper with the name of the student that generated the, the image under, in the microscope, because they're all images from microscope, uh, and uh, uh, lastly, me, as if I were signing the senior author of the paper. And uh, 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 regardless of whether uh, they ended up, uh, you know, th this is because it, I, I see it as a joint, uh, a joint work, you know. We, uh, I raised the money to do to do all this. Uh, I ended up putting together the exhibit. Uh, in, in this particular case, for example, Anna did such a superb job that I didn't have to do anything. I only put in the title. These are the minority of the of the the, the works that I create. Actually, um, uh, this this is uh, in the majority of the works that I create. I do a lot of. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, maybe I adjusted the contrast and so on, but in the majority of the works, I, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of manipulation. I will talk about that, but uh, that's where that's where I uh, um, that's why you'll see the, um, that's how I justify putting the name on on, on these. Um, so this is uh, one example, another beautiful uh, picture taken by uh, by Anna. I think I might have changed the uh, accent accentuated the blue here. And I put a, uh, I always put a title on all of the all of the pieces. Another one by Anna. She was a fantastic uh, uh, microscopist, and she was taking very, very beautiful pictures of cells. She was very. Um, she was my first PhD student. And then uh, Greg Cooksey also took beautiful. He was actually an amateur photographer, and he took beautiful pictures of microchannels. And I'm showing you pictures. What I call uh, picture perfect. Uh, picture per uh, perfect uh, images that are almost almost straight out of the microscope. Okay, I'll go more into uh, detail into uh, other uh, elaborations later. And this is a, a triptych that uh, uh, Greg showed me one day. He showed me the, the separate images, and I put them together because I think they are more beautiful uh, shown them together. And I, call, I called it color shower. <coughs> And it was in the exhibits, we always hang them together. That's another one. I call it the day that Bondrian visited the lab because uh, there was a uh, very nice, uh, uh, the, my student Chris Sip, he, he showed uh, a, a piece of a, of, a, of, a, of a device that looked like a Mondrian, uh, a Mondrian painting. So with all these images, one day in, in 2007, 
I had a, 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 a hard drive crash, and I almost lost all these images. So these images were sitting in my hard drive, and that's how, how it all started. Sometimes people ask me, how, how did it all start? How did you have this idea? So at that time, uh, the University of Washington, had, uh, I started to think about, well, how, how can I put all these online? How can I, put, how can I s uh, save all my images in a safe place? And uh, luckily, at the same time, uh, Google started offering the Picasa, the Picasa service uh, of, uh, of uh, online. So I said, well, what the heck, I, I, I'm not going to hide them in my hard drive. I actually want people to see them all. So I indexed in one day, I indexed all my hard drive, and I put them all online and, and organized in these, in these uh, folders. I just gave them uh, some, uh, some folders, even some movies. And, uh, and then I started getting emails uh, within a week or so of, oh, these are so beautiful, thank you, blah, 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 etc. And, uh, and uh, a, a couple of months later, I, I got offered to have a, an exhibit in a, in a hospital because it, it had been featured, it was featured in a, in a, in a local um, uh, College of Engineering um, the, uh, newsletter. Um, so that evolved into what I call uh, BAIT uh, now, uh, bringing art into technology, which is what I will be describing. So that, it, it all, it all was, uh, was caused by a hard drive crash. This is, uh, <coughs> okay, so what I call BAIT is essentially um, this exhibit. In, in this exhibit, uh, uh, what we put is, is the, the um, every image is exhibited as uh, um, that, that's when, when the, we first came up with the idea is to place every, uh, put a text that accompanies the image and in this text we explain the science behind the image, okay? So that goes together with a, with a beautiful uh, image and the, the idea, we call it, that's why we call it bait, the image acts <coughs> to capture your attention as, as a bait uh, so that when you walk out of the exhibit, you have learned some science. So the image acts as a, as a way to capture, you, to, to, uh, as, as a bait, as a, to capture your attention. Um, and uh, so this is uh, one of the original images called Microfluidic River, and it actually has even some uh, some uh, uh, fish uh, that are glued to the image. And they this is actually a mold that contains the. Uh, the, the, the device with which this image was generated. It's a little bit more subtle than you can see. <laughs> um, and we've done uh, uh, this, this, uh, some chronology of the, of the first exhibits that we've uh, done. We've done now, uh, this one is the, well, if you count the one, the images that are sitting uh, out there, this would be the sixth one. Um, and we, we, we also uh, sell them, we've sold a, f a few of them, we've not, we, 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 we're not rich, <laughs> we, we've, maybe we've made about 2000 or $3,000 total uh, over the, all these years uh, in, uh, in this online gallery. And we, we have the, a, a YouTube channel and that is probably the most spectacular thing because we've had uh, about 100,000 uh, uh, views of all the if you count all the uh, videos. So there's not that many videos actually, there's only 36 or 40, 40 videos. And I think the next one is a, is the, is a, is a, video, a video, one of the, one, the most popular ones. But I wanna, um, <coughs> and I'm not gonna play all of it, I'm gonna play only half of it because it's uh, a little bit long, but, the, at the bottom, it explains the technology, so it's all. This music is by Shostakovich. It's a, it's a waltz that is rarely played.
So we connected each valve to a different filter. And each one, each micro valve responds to a different frequency of music. The colors are inverted. This device was transparent before. So the music restarts now, <clears throat> and actually the, pat the pattern repeats very beautifully because it's very reproducible. I'm going to stop here for in the interest of time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, but I I just want to um, yeah I just want to point out this you know Shostakovich was was uh, was very. Uh, 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 very uh, depressed at the time because he was uh, um, uh, being accused of being bourgeois, you know, and, and I think he made this beautiful music uh, on, uh, on a time, and, and this music is, 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 uh, has not been, uh, has not even been publicized that much. It's one of the most beautiful musics of, by, by Shostakovich, which is not even that well known, and it's, it's very interesting that the that uh, he was being uh, accused of being bourgeois, and he was, he w he was at, the, at this time, he was uh, even sleeping, he was afraid of, of being uh, taken to prison, he was sleeping uh, uh, fully dressed, uh, he was, uh, uh, because uh, he was li uh, living in fear, and, and he composed this beautiful music at the time, <coughs> and that's why I, I, I changed the color to, uh, to a, a, a black uh, background. Um, so, uh, so I just want to I just want to enter into a conversation here because I, I've shown you all these these images that are you know picture perfect, <coughs> and I told you that these are the the, the minority of, of of what I consider my the, the art that comes out of my lab, and and these are what I consider what you know if you go out on a on a, in a outside uh, you know and, and you see a beautiful landscape and you take a picture you you are having uh, you know you, you you showing your your artistic sensibility by taking that picture framing it in a particular way same thing when you uh, go on the mic on the microscope and you observe your sample and you take your your uh, a picture of a, of a beautiful sample uh, that's the typical you know small world uh, Nikon competition. There's, there's several of these competitions now. They're, they're you know, sci these scientific art competitions. Uh, we see a lot of them. They're very beautiful, and there's several examples here that, that, that your students have taken. I, I think of my art uh, uh, slightly uh, different than this, although uh, I've shown you s several examples because I don't, I don't renegade of it at all. If, if, uh, if my student brings me a beautiful image, I, I frame it. Uh, but I, I want to show you what the type of uh, manipulations that we do, that I do with, with the images that my students take, um, to show you what you can do with these images that is also very beautiful. Um, 
So, for example, imagine a, a very pretty image. So, this uh, you recognize the device is the same uh, Shostakovich device that, that I that I showed you before. And my student once, uh, you know, brought this image to me. Uh, this is a raw a raw image, and I want to sh show you, you know, the type of process, the type of thought processes that that, uh, that are very different when we talk about science versus when we talk about art. Um, so. In, in science or, in, or engineering, when we discuss this, uh, this image, we, we might, my student and I, might be talking about the flow patterns that we see. You know, we, we're concerned about the trapping of this uh, air bubble here. Uh, so we, we talk about the, the resolution of these features, what we can improve, uh, the, the hydrodynamic resistance of, of, these, of these valves. Uh, and since this, was, uh, this chamber was intended for cells, we, we, if, if we culture cells in it, we, we, we started talking about, about the cell viability and so on. Okay? So these are discussions that my students and I would, would have talking about this image. <clears throat> when I go home, I, I take this image and I start drooling uh, about, uh, on it because it's so gorgeous, right? So this, this image has all these features. Uh, you know, this, for example, this bubble itself is actually beautiful. It's a defect, but sometimes defects are the best, make the best art uh, because, you know, it gives an asymmetry, it, it gives a... a, a uh, a, you know, a certain composition that is the, the best part. The, the gradients here are, are also very beautiful. So it gives tint and contrast that, that, are, that are not, not the, uh, the, that are the, the best part. And, and then, you know, the, the, uh, again, the, the, so the, the, the bubble here, it seems like, you know, like a composition element that, that allows you to, to uh, uh, think about things. And it actually, uh, that gave me an association, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you, and I'll, you'll see it in a second, because it's very funny. Uh, and, and that gave me the idea for a title. So um, uh, that, that was the, the, for me, that's a very, that was a very rich image. And um, I want to just point out that all these, all these discussions here, if we talk about, if we look at this image with my students on, and we are analyzing this image from a, on a scientific plane. All these discussions are purely objective. You know, we, there's no, we can put uh, numbers on all these parameters. Whereas all these discussions here are purely subjective. If you, if you don't like it, uh, if you don't like this image or you don't like my appreciations or my association, my feelings about this image, uh, well, we, you can just walk away. You know, it's okay. We don't need to agree. Okay. So that's if you don't like my art, I don't. I don't take offense. You know, I don't. That's not. We don't need to agree. But so this is an important. This is an, impo an important distinction. And so for me, when I saw this, you know, this these shapes here and this contest to me, that I immediately drew an association with me, uh, John Miro. Uh, Mios, I'm very familiar with uh, his art because I'm, we're from the same town, so, well, uh, from the same part of the country. So, uh, I, I, to me, I, I drew this association. So I changed that that into this. I changed the the, the color, uh, the the background, and uh, I call it Miro's microfluidic palette. And I made this into, and that's uh, that's sitting outside. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of my favorites too. So I made it. Uh, Drop my mic. Sorry. There we go. So another. This is another example. I saw these cells. That my my student Aileen brought me, and I immediately thought of the, of uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. So I. I, took, I call it Van Gogh cells, and I colorized it. And um, that's uh, my my parents' favorite, and it's uh, at my my parents' house. And another another image by uh, also by Anna Trubskaya's uh, thing, and that uh, it evoked uh, uh, Paul Klee's uh, one of Paul Klee's uh, compositions, but because of the regularity and the colors. So I did a lot of coloring, and I just want to point out here that um, color in fluorescence microscopy, this is not 
how the camera takes the picture, although this is how the student looks, uh, sees the image to the, through the viewer. But the camera takes three pictures, three separate pictures for each of the colors and, and uh, stores them in grayscale. And then they are recombined by Photoshop. So the three colors are, are recombi recombined in, in, the, in, the three, in, the, in, in three channels. So I feel that you, this, this channel, this uh, image, has as much information as this one. So I'm totally entitled to, uh, to recolor the image locally if I want to. I, all I'm doing here is changing the hue uh, locally. So I, th I think I'm just, I just want to point out that it's actually funny. That this image is just as publishable as this one. Mm -hmm. I could submit this one for publication <laughs> if I wanted to. Um, so I made, I made this one, um, and then I, I, put, I put the three together, and I called it Paul Clay's autopsy because it reminded me of the, of the, um, of the DNA arrays uh, that, that uh, are produced modernly. Um, and this one is also uh, outside, and it's my, my daughter's favorite, so I'm lucky that my family likes my art, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's hanging out in my, in my house all the time. Um, this one, uh, so scale, scale mismatch is, is a, 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 you know, a trick that you can use for, for and I suggest that you, if you want to use for, for creating, uh, for, for art, it's a very good trick for art, and you can put together two images. Uh, we were, at the time we were, this, this, the idea for this came about because uh, we were doing a, a, a project uh, for uh, olfaction research, so we're using microfluidics for olfaction, so we had a, a friend actually suggested, oh, why don't you, why don't you do, uh, put together some images for, w with, a, with a Chanel number no. five uh, thing. He, he didn't, he, said, he made the suggestion, so he didn't, uh, so then I started thinking about it and I made this. I, I put the, the, the number Chanel in, inside and I, I, I changed it to channel, <laughs> so the number five channel. So it's called aromatic channel, and this one is my, and this one is my wife's favorite, <laughs> and it's also at our house because she is the one who is uh, who works it in, in olfaction. So uh, this one is, uh, of course. So these, these are my my children and, and one of their cousins. Uh, these are photoshopped out of a, of an image jumping into a into a a, a pool. And, uh, and then I put them jumping into a, a small microchannel. So this is an, a kind of an impossibility of a scale, but it makes a nice, a nice, uh, a nice picture. <coughs> this one is also one of my favorites, and it, it was an idea that I, I proposed for a, for a brochure uh, for the center, for center, um, the Molière Center uh, in, in Washington. And they, they, they used a variation of this in the end. So, and this one is also printed for, for, the, for here, for, for the ones, the, the images that I brought, uh, uh, that I brought here. Um, and this is another variation also similar. Uh, the idea of, uh, the, the, I like the, the expression of the, of the girl uh, and, and the proximity of the other image. Um, I just wanna show you this, this is a very, uh, a, a very simple transformation that consists of, so for example, if you, in, in Photoshop you can do these hue shifts, they're very simple. So for example, if you do a, a shift, uh, this is the original image, and you, should, you do a, a shift to a more uh, purple uh, type, but if you go from here, what's interesting is, the, is this, this two, the combination of these two. If you do 180 hue shift and then do an inversion, uh, look what happens. It's, uh, all the whites get converted into black, and, and uh, so it's like a, almost the, the night version of the devices. And I uh, discovered this uh, uh, serendipitously. Uh, it's very interesting because then you can make uh, kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, night, night, day and night versions of the same devices. And so I, this is also hanging at my, at my house. Uh, and uh, so you can make these two uh, uh, diptychs uh, for the, the, that have very nice contrast. Um, and it's a very simple uh, transformation. 
um, collages. I make a lot of collages from this. Sometimes my students bring me, uh, you know, a set of images, and the collage of, of those images alone makes a gorgeous makes a gorgeous uh, um, uh, montage. Uh, here's a, uh, uh, these, these are hippocampal neurons that are sitting on, on astrocytes, and the astrocytes themselves are micro pattern on, on islands. <coughs> and uh, so if you put them together, uh, it makes a gorgeous uh, uh, thing. And, uh, and the, the title is a play on the fact that the, these, these are, they look like eyes. So that's why I named it Neurons Looking at You. <coughs> I, 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 like, I actually like playing, th think, I always think a lot about the title. It's something that that uh, that I, I've learned a lot about from from painters like Miro or you know this some or Clay. Clay makes always these beautiful titles that are very kind of mysterious and they make you think. So I, I, this is something I've always uh, admired about those uh, artists. Um, uh, these are these are just also a collage, and I wanted to. Uh, I, I, I first did the collage with the static. Uh, and there was something missing about it. They, they, I wanted to, to give more of a sense of how dynamic uh, these, these are when you see the movies. And the movies of these are, are very, so I just, I just move them, <laughs> make them pop out to, to give you a sense of the, of the dynamic, uh, the, how dynamic these are. Because we, we actually posted the, the movies of these gradients. Um, this is an image that, that, uh, that was uh, pretty on itself, but uh, what I did is I, I, I made a, a collage with, a, with its own reflection, and I cleaned up the, the edges and I put it on, on a blue border, and uh, I like it because it's, uh, it creates uh, uh, an impossible flow pattern, but you have to look at it carefully to uh, realize that. So I, I kind of like the fact that it's, a, it's kind of an, a physical impossibility. Um, uh, this one is also a, a, a simple, this device, uh, this is a single device uh, taken at three different times and the, the, the fluid was uh, evolving. This is a, a very viscous uh, fluid and um, uh, again the, the, the camera was no uh, there's no color in it. It was fluorescence, but I colorized it to make it to make this. It's uh, prettier. Um, I did. Uh, this, there's a little bit of explaining I need to do here. It looks uh, uh, a little bit like uh, Andy Warhol, Warhol uh, and, uh, with the colors. A lot of people tell me that my collages look like Andy Warhol. So I, I might ha I might like the, the probably I like the same color schemes. Uh, Jonathan Belil is, a, is not my student, he's a student in, in the University of Montreal, a different group, but uh, he asked me to serve in his uh, PhD committee, and I said, uh, but he, he developed a technique to deposit uh, proteins uh, with an unprecedented dynamic uh, uh, res uh, resolution. So uh, he, he can, uh, uh, this is actually an image of, uh, of, of, um, of uh, Mandela, with with uh, with um, with proteins, with fluorescent proteins, and it's 300 microns on the side. So uh, uh, I said, okay, I'll contribute. Uh, I'll I'll serve in your PhD committee. <laughs> I'm 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 very bad. I, I, so I'll serve in your PhD committee if you print for me three images. And. Uh, and uh, he said, of course, what could he say, right? <laughs> he said yes. And I, I wonder if he, if, he said, if he thought that was being bad. But, uh, but he said, and, I, and, and then I sent him the three images, and, and uh, one of them was the Mandela. And so I could uh, do it for my art. And, and then I, I read his PhD thesis, and it was an excellent one. I already knew that because I had read his, all his papers already. So um, and then I, I was when when Mandela died. That was before way before Mandela died. I I composed this. Um, I also did another one with uh, these are uh, he actually had already uh, uh, pr uh, printed Einstein, and I asked him to print the the famous uh, uh, Warsaw Ghetto boy. This iconic image of a boy raising his hands when the Nazis are pointing at him. So I, this, I was trying to imagine uh, what would have happened to our world if Einstein had been this boy. So 
that's where that's where the puzzle pieces come into play. <coughs> um, this is a quick introduction to the work of Antoni Tapias. He's the uh, most famous uh, painter uh, uh, that was has been born in in Barcelona. He was uh, he died uh, recently, but he is one of the uh, uh, pioneers of uh, art. Nowadays, a lot of artists uh, play with. Uh, Paint that has uh, sand or or uh, material in it, right? Or you you see that all the time. Well, he did that in the 1930s, uh, and but he's, he died recently, a very old age. But he was one of the pioneers. He's uh, he's very well known among in in in, in, in artistic uh, circles. But uh, in, in he's uh, you know he paints a lot with uh, he did a. Lot, uh, a lot of crosses uh, and, and these earthy, earthy tones and, and ochre tones. Uh, so <clears throat> one day I was given uh, these images by my student Aileen, and I um, I started playing with collages. I inverted them. They're, they're very beautiful. These are images of uh, of muscle cells that forming myotubes, and they're uh, staying for silico interceptor expression. And so I, I made one of these T's or crosses that are uh, so typical of tapias. And there's another another variation of, uh, for as a chess uh, chess thing. And another variation made uh, of uh, a soccer ball that my, my this is my son's favorite. So it's hanging in his in his uh, room. And uh, I think I'm almost done because these are this is the uh, we've also played a little bit with the um, uh, with pieces that have inside. So <coughs> this is actually a cutout, and inside receded is the installation of a device. The, the device that was, that was used to create this uh, th this this gradient. So uh, this is a more a more unique. This one cannot be reprinted. If someone steals this, uh, <laughs> it has some value. Um, and, and this one I already explained to you. That's the microfluidic river. Actually, we use this this uh, uh, beautiful pattern as a uh, as, a, as the, the the bait um, uh, brochure all the time. Um, and uh, I think I just want to uh, emphasize once more before saying thank you uh, that, uh, that I think um, the main message that I want to point out to you is that I think uh, really art is, is a great vehicle to communicate uh, uh, science uh, very efficiently to, uh, to the public. So uh, please use it. You know, it's, uh, uh, you, you are all doing... Very, taking very beautiful images in your in your lab, so you can you can do that. As you can just post it, uh, even if you just post it on the on the web. Uh, that's very easy to do. Uh, that's uh, that counts. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Falk, for this very interesting talk. And you can also see six of uh, Dr. Falk pictures in the atrium and next and to and the And I want to say that I also, if you want to see others, I, I, I have self-printed a, a book of all my, um, of all our art, so uh, it's, I brought it. So if you want to take a look at it. So this brings us to uh, what a lot of you are impatiently waiting for. The results of envisioning the invisible photo and image contest. So this year we had um, 63 submissions, most of them from very creative engineers. The best 14 pictures are displayed in the atrium. They were um, selected by graduate students. <laughs> and from these 14 pictures, four judges from the art and science fields chose the best three pictures as well as two honorable mentions. So I would like to thank our judges for their time and valuable perspectives. Uh, Dr. Katsuleas, Dean of Engineering, Michelle Guignac from the Smith Facility, Melissa Green from the Nasher Museum, and Kayla Toothhacker, professional photograph in Durham. 
So in addition to these prizes, anybody could vote for their favorite pictures online for the Public Choice Award. And if the winners are, are in the rooms, um, please come forward when I call your name and we will give you your prize now. So the Public Choice Award was given to Yu Xie Shi for a very interesting representation of the DNA and protein interaction. So if they're in the room, no? Then we will go to the next one. The first honorable mention is given to Craig Laboda for capturing the oscillations of guitar strings. The second honorable mention is given to Isvar Cordova, showing nanoflowers on a forest of carbon nanotubes, the next generation of supercapacitors. The third place is awarded to August Burns with a great picture of icicles at sunset. No August Burns in the room. <laughs> Second place is awarded to Matthew. Oh, she's here. Second place, Mathieu Siganis, who did capture the invisible with this picture of bryophytes and sun rays. And finally, the first place winner this year is Akash Sahai, showing an iron beam which will be used in future technology for cancer therapy. Congratulations, Akash. If he's not there, we'll give it to someone else. <laughs> so congratulations to all the winners and all the participants. Before closing the seminar, I would like everyone to give a round of applause for the people who have dedicated their life, their, not their life, their time <laughs> and effort to organizing this event. They're also PhD students during their free time. So Lauren here, Anna was giving the program, and then Lauren Lohman and Tamara Sajobade, as well as Sarah Faust, who might be in the room or outside. So please join me in thanking them. Closes the seminar.